Uh, now I'm going to touch on the, um, the, the ancient grains and the heritage wheats on the agronomic section and what, we're, what this project is addressing and what, uh, what the outcome will be of that. Uh, let's see here. Do I have the screen? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I want to just identify the, the research team Muted. in this. The overall project uh, PI is Mark Sorrells in Cornell University. And on the agronomy team, we have Dave Benisher and Julie Dawson from Cornell, Mike Davies from the Cornell Baker Research Farm. Uh, we're involved with Penn State University, Greg Roth there, Elizabeth Dick um, from the Organic Growers Research and Information Sharing Network, and myself, um, Steve Zwinger at the North Dakota State University uh, Carrington Research Center. So you can see we have a, a, a pretty broad spectrum of, of uh, a team of university researchers to address many of the issues that we'll talk about here. Um, well, first of all, uh, and it's been addressed many times here, but just to, to clarify as we go through this portion, again, we talk about the ancient wheats, um, and for the most part, everything that we're working with to date, pretty much um, the hulls do stay intact as we thrash them. And again, these are the, the type of wheats we're talking, the einkorn, emmer, and spelt. And again, uh, as, as it's been mentioned, these are the order that they have showed up over time. Um, we, there are spring and winter types. Um, Predominantly, uh, in the initial part of the uh, project, we are being mostly working with springs, evaluating winters and increasing them to, to look at their potential uh, across the different geographic areas we're working at. And um, so the heritage wheats, or as Julie called them, historic wheats, we hear uh, many different terms used for these types of wheats. Well, these are basically the modern, um, you know, soft or, or or hard red or white wheats that we are working with. And again, these are winter and spring types. Again, I consider them to be modern varieties or varieties that can anywhere be from uh, 30 to 150 years old. It seems like many people classify that like the oldest variety that we probably all know about and stuff that would be in that 150 year old category would be red fife. Um, I think one of the things that, I, that I've dealt with or we've dealt with that it probably pre-1950 developed varieties may be the most common or best definition for a heritage variety as uh, many people like to um, look at. And basically one of the things that is very evident as we start a project like this working even with seed um, for research purposes or to get into the hands of farmers is we're dealing with a limited supply of, of seed of all the types of these wheats. Um, Particularly uh, the the heritage wheats, wheats that are not that old, um, sometimes are very hard to find enough seed for farmers to plant at the one or two or three acre level. Um, sorry, I'm advancing here. Wrong. Okay, so, and again, as I said, seed sources are limited. I think, as it's again been pointed out, that einkorn is probably, in particular, one of the uh, scarcest source of seed in, in, in the especially in the United States as we're looking at trying to find um, sources to get on field scale. Uh, we're working with a number of different uh, sources that will be increasing over this, um, over this project, as it will be explained a little bit later. But again, as we look at, uh, particularly in North America, with most of these crops, we've seen very little uh, variety improvement or breeding effort. Um, with Emmer, uh, to my knowledge, there's only been one variety released, and that's been a variety by Montana State University, and that was a variety that was is called Lucille and uh, is being grown commercially, and that is a, a variety that has been selected from uh, the Plant Introduction Center. Um, with spelt, there are a couple of spring varieties, AC Bavaria and CDC um, uh, Nixon, and these are from Ag Canada or the Crop Development Center. And again, one of one has been bred, and one of them is a selection from the Plant Introduction Center. There are very there are a few private or proprietary winter varieties that are grown, as spelt is one of the more common um, crops grown. And also, Montana State University did release a variety called Frank that is a, a land race uh, farmer uh, developed and selected saved variety. So as we see many of the seed sources that we're looking at are land races or as Julie mentioned seed that's been grown in different areas and categorized and saved. So it's farmer saved seed, saved seed or seed that comes from uh, our, our national seed repository. 
there's just a shot to show what what Emerseed looks like, and as um, as that is uh, very similar to spelt and a little bit larger than einkorn. The Emerseed again with the hull intact, and there's two wheat berries inside of each one of those. So basically, as far as the agronomic grows, agronomics of growing these crops, what do we know? Um, well, we know that the majority of the production practices and the management recommendations are very similar to wheat. In particular, whatever area of the country you're in, you would want to look at them as you grow your, 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 your crops there. So what we've seen is that yields, and again, in the hull of the ancient grains, um, are very similar to what our wheat would yield. And these are, are yields, uh, again, from, from organic environments, farms, and research centers. So you can expect very, very similar yields. One thing that's been noticed under really high yielding environments, high fertility, good moisture, um, the, the modern wheats will definitely out yield some of the ancient grains. But if we get into um, situations where it may not be as high or yielding, such as a drought year situation or possibly some lower fertility situations, we see them compare and compete much better. Um, and one of the things that's probably one of the bigger hindrances, as, as Frank also pointed out in his session, is, is that uh, uh, the, the ancient grains, particular emmer, um, will lodge quite easy, especially under high fertility and high moisture situations. And so um, we, we do need to see some plant breeding effort to go on on that one. As far as pest problems go, as it's also been pointed out, um, particularly with weed, uh, weed competition, one thing that's been noticed uh, with, with emmer is that it's very competitive with weeds, uh, much more than, than even um, uh, einkorn and, and spelt and even some of our modern wheats. So we have noticed that emmer is a very weed uh, competitive crop. As far as disease resistance goes, um, many of these crops don't, uh, don't get our rusts and other things like that. As a matter of fact, that's where we have, as Frank also pointed out, that is where some of our rust resistance and other things um, had come from, and so they're very useful in breeding. And to date, too, we've not really seen a lot of insect problems. And as far as management goes or recommendations, how we could tell you for seeding dates, um, it is felt that they may um, possibly be able to seed it be seeded a little bit later as it might be a little more resilient. But I think I would still recommend until we get um, further information to seed them as early or at pro the dates you would normally seed your wheat, whether that would be spring wheat or the winter crops also. As far as planting rate goes, again, we're seeding most of these grains in the hull. We're not dehulling prior to planting. And we're seeding like the emmer, einkorn, and spelt at about 100 pounds per acre in the hull, which does come to a little bit over a million plants per acre. And as far as fertility goes, recommendations are that we would probably want to, particularly with emmer, as it can lodge more, be in a little bit lower fertility situations than we want would want for higher yielding weed environments and such like that. Um, but as a whole, it is felt that they are able to have a, a slight better ability at extracting some nutrients. Um, so that will be determined as we go on. So a couple of the objectives on this are basically the number one objective is to evaluate germplasm within this um, project. And basically, we're evaluating the germplasm of ancient, heritage, and modern wheat varieties along with these. And we're doing this research at the research sites, university sites, research farms, and also on farm. Um, in farmers' fields, multiple sites at each location. So we're getting a broad um, broad spectrum of uh, uh, testing on, on these crops to see how they'll perform. And we're doing this through variety trials once we have more seeds uh, to, to increase them to get to that quantity, observational screenings, and seed increases. So we're looking at a number of different ways to see this. Initially in starting out in this trial, we had looked at we had uh, brought together something like 224 different varieties and land races of seed. Again, these were all very small quantity, um, many sometimes less than 100 grams, and we're, using, we're increasing these and evaluating as the project goes on. Now, this seed comes from a wide, many different sources, much as the, the Green Repository, organic seedsmen and organic farming groups, different universities, uh, multiple state seed foundations, and farmers also. And and as we've continued and went on in this project, we've also assessed more lines. And so we, we've already are probably up to 500 different lines to evaluate to see how they'll perform. Um, 
in our environments. As much of this seed comes from uh, all around the world, and a lot of it isn't adapted, so there's a lot of identification that needs to go on. And here's just an example of a couple of the uh, Emmer variety trials in farmers' fields in, in North Dakota here. Um, you'll see the, the, the replicated trials there. And again, uh, end results of, the, of these objectives of this germplasm is to, to find um, different lines of each, or different lines, varieties, cultivars of each species that are adapted to organic systems. And basically, the, some of the main criteria that will determine that will be its overall yield, uh, maturity to fit into that, um, that environment, the pest resistance, the overall vigor, height, again, an important, and again, the lodging, very important. So many different characteristics to look at to, to have fit to um, this. And, and with that, again, that would be the field spill situation, but with that we would then again look at uh, desirable grain and baking characteristics. Some of that might be the hulling ability, the protein, test weight, make a higher quality crane and such. And after we find many of these lines, we will then select and increase these lines that fit that criteria and they will be evaluated through research trials and eventually hoping to go to um, field scale production with some of this material. So uh, in the end result, some lines being available to farmers. Uh, just an example of some of the drill strip increases of, uh, that are used to provide seed for this project. Again, we're, we're limited on the einkorn, as has always been mentioned, so you'll only see the one line there that we have at that uh, particular amount of seed. But the emmer, um, as you see to your right there, we do have uh, a greater uh, number of lines, more diversity, and you can see from this shot here too, as Frank had talked about earlier, there's differences in height and maturity, and this happens to be some of the different types very easily illustrated right there. So the second objective um, in the agronomic portion of this trial is then to refine some of these management recommendations for the heritage wheat emmer and einkorn. And what we're looking at there is a, a couple of different uh, components and one of them obviously is again the nitrogen fertility management. And this will be looked at uh, different levels of nitrogen provided through organic sources, whether it be poultry, manure, or whatever determined, will be applied to determine proper uh, in nitrogen levels in the heritage winter wheat and in emmer. Planting dates will be looked at in heritage winter wheat and emmer and einkorn, and many times compared, this, um, particularly with emmer and einkorn, will be compared to uh, spring wheat in that area. And then also to refine um, uh, uh, planting rate recommendations, we'll be looking at uh, studies dealing with uh, heritage winter wheat and emmer and einkorn seeding rate trials. And again, these trials will be conducted on research sites and again on farm uh, in uh, all in organic environments. Just an example here of an, uh, an I'm sorry, I guess this shot doesn't look too good here, but you can see some differences in uh, the organic emmer seeding rate trial this past year. Five different seeding rates going from 50 to 150 pounds. One of the things obviously that's very noticeable here, if you look to the right to the right where the arrow is pointing, that's lodged quite a bit more. We do see the higher seeding rates we go to also, we do see more plant lodging. Um, so many, many different uh, things to look at to to de determine production practices so that when farmers start growing some of these crops, we can give them good information. Well, along that line, since I talked so much about seed increase, I just want to run through a very busy little quick chart here, but to show you how some of the North Dakota farmers did um, do this with a very small amount of seed a few years back to get uh, a variety or a cultivar that we did deem as North Dakota common emmer. So basically, if you look at we started with 100 grams of seed. And it was looked at an evaluation first for a few years, for three years in evaluation plots, basically planting 100 grams each year. So getting uh, three and a half pounds or 10 pounds after that. After that, it was deemed coming out of the evaluation to that it needed to be increased. So we planted 10 pounds on a tenth of an acre. Spread that out over two farms um, and uh, harvested 140 pounds. The next year took those 140 pounds, planted them on two acres, harvested 1,400 pounds. After that, 1,400 pounds was planted on 18 acres, and then we had a 1,600 pound yield. 
than going to 144 acres spread across two growers. So I guess I used this as an example to show you really how fast um, if you have a line that looks adapted and you can get it into the hands and get field scale production. And just an example here of, of that final year of a field of uh, North Dakota common emmer in North Dakota at the Lewis Seibel farm up in Cathay. And again, as you can see, uh, if you'll notice, it is a fairly competitive crop. We can see some thistle growing right along the edge of the field in here, um, but you notice it, does, it is pretty competitive and a fairly clean field. And again, this, this field here ran uh, right close to 2,000 pounds to the acre. And with that, I thank you, and I'll turn it over.